Hey guys, welcome to a new video. We are revisiting the 1920s today. Yes, we are. And in this video, I'm going to show you three different ways that you can wear your hair in a 20s fashion when your hair is actually long. We all associate the 1920s with the short boyish bobbed hairstyles and those were very popular at the time, but like in any era where short hair was popular, not all women were super happy to jump on that and cut their hair short. In all the decades before the 20s, super long hair was the norm. So I guess you can imagine that it was quite an extreme fashion to cut your hair that short for many women and many women struggle with it a lot, especially older generations and women who were maybe a little bit more conservative. And that is why loads and loads of women actually wore their hair in faux bobs. A wonderful modern example of this that I think many of you might be familiar with is the character Dottie or Dot Dorothy from Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries. She seems to have a bob all throughout the show, but then there are some scenes where she is in her night clothes where you can clearly see that she has a very long curly ponytail. And that is very realistic because a person like her who is a little bit more reserved and shy and traditional would definitely have not been super keen on cutting her hair short. The first hairstyle that I'm going to show you today is actually how she wears her hair in at least some episodes of the show where you can see the back of her head. Um, but before we get into that I first need to curl my hair of course because the hair needs to be curled for this and we need a little bit of that finger wave action. So I'm gonna start by making a deep side parting in my hair and curling my hair with the smallest curling iron I currently have, which is this one right here. And the most important thing when you want to make cohesive waves in your hair is to go row by row when you are curling. So I'm going to be curling all of my hair in the same direction, but I'm gonna pay a lot of attention to where my curl starts making sure that I make my way back in rows. So every time I finish a curl, I'm gonna roll it up and pin it away with a little duck bill clip. So when I've done that all over my head, I'm gonna give that a few minutes to cool down. And while we are waiting for those curls to set, I wanted to tell you a little bit about today's sponsor, because today's video is kindly sponsored by Ana Luisa, who make absolutely beautiful jewelry. My favorite pieces are from them, and they are running a Mother's Day sale. Ana Luisa make absolutely beautiful, dainty jewelry pieces. In fact, most of the jewelry I wear in my videos nowadays is from them. And today I am actually wearing some pieces from their new collection. This necklace and this beautiful bracelet right here and I have one more beautiful beautiful necklace from that collection which I have worn for the past three days, I think, <laughs> consecutively. Ana Luisa, as a jewelry brand, really focus on sustainability, which is something I value a lot. They have a goal to achieve a net zero carbon footprint by the end of 2020, and all of the gold that they use is reused. So it's not mined, it's all recycled, which is absolutely fantastic, because there is so much gold out there already that is unused right now. The pieces are of an amazing quality, very long lasting. I don't have any signs of wear on any of mine whatsoever, and I have had them for a while. And for the quality that they they are. The prices are really really good starting at only $39 but they also have some higher end pieces featuring lab grown diamonds. There's something there for everyone so absolutely be sure to check out their website and like I mentioned they are running a Mother's Day sale and I feel like their pieces are absolutely perfect as a Mother's Day gift. So I will have a link in the description box below the video to their website where you can go check that out. And they also have some really cute gift boxes if you want to use this as a Mother's Day gift. So a big thank you to Anna Luisa for sponsoring today's video. Do be sure to check out the website. Their pieces are absolutely gorgeous. And let's move on with the hairstyles. All right, my curls have cooled down and set, so it's time to let them down and see the ringlets that we have to work with now. The ringlets are looking good, so it's time for the hardest part. Let's all pray to the historical hairstyling gods that they let me do something that looks remotely like a finger wave today. <sighs> Let's get started. I'm gonna brush this out and see what we get. I have some nice and tight curls, so I'm feeling hopeful. All right, this is a good base to start with. What we're going to have in all the hairstyles and what I'm going to start with is the beautiful finger wave type curl that is going to go along the top and sides of my head. As you guys know, this is something I'm not very good at. I'm going to try my best <laughs> to make something acceptable. We'll just see how far I get with that. So 
So I'm basically just combing and forcing my hair into this wavy shape which is made possible by the curls that we made. Okay, <laughs> so far I'd say it's not too bad. I have somewhat of a wave going on. What happens below, I'd say chin level, doesn't really matter that much because we are going to do faux updos or faux bobs. But just to make sure that this stays looking like this after I take down the clips, I am going to spray this down with a lot of hairspray in an effort to make it last. Just to give this the opportunity to dry and set and to make sure I don't ruin it, uh, I'm going to leave my clips in while I work on the rest of the first hairstyle. And for this first hairstyle, I am going to be taking the bottom of my hair. I'm gonna brush this out just a little bit more, make sure that at least the top is really nice and smooth. With the bottom of my hair, I am going to form little pink curls that are going to make a row all along the nape of my neck, kind of the bob line, and that is going to create my faux bob. This is something that was done a lot in the 20s. It's a really easy way to hide even uh, very long lengths of hair and make it look like you have a bob or at least to have that fashionable silhouette. I'm going to start in the middle and work my way out. So I'm just taking some hair, and since this is already curled, it shouldn't be too hard to form a little pin curl. Which I'm then going to roll all the way up to my hairline here. So I'm gonna pin it down with a couple of bobby pins. And when you're doing this, you want to make sure to hide your bobby pins underneath the roll. You don't really want to be able to see these. So it should end up looking something like this. Then I'm going to take the next bit of hair over, do the same thing. Encourage the curl to roll up. Bring it all the way to my hairline and pin it right next to that first curl that I made. So when you've reached the front curl, the one that's next to your face, you can now decide how long you want the front of your hair to be. I like mine a little bit longer, so I'm not going to roll it all the way up. I also feel like this makes it look more like an up to and less like a 20s faux bob. So I'm going to leave it quite long and about jaw length. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. You should end up with something a little like this. And when you're happy with the way it looks, you can then take down your duckbill clips or whatever you use to hold down your curls. If you don't have these duckbill clips, then bobby pins work as well. Anything that will hold down that hair. So here is your first option. It's a pretty basic 1920s faux bob for people with long hair, but this is definitely something that women would have worn a lot back in the day. If you wanted, of course, you could accessorize this with different kinds of accessories. Just sliding in a little hair clip makes it a bit more visually interesting. I also have a scarf here, which is very 20s looking in my opinion, um, which you could wrap around your head. That's for days when your waves don't turn out quite the way you had hoped. <laughs> this is also something that would have been worn a lot in the 20s as well. Before I start working on the second hairstyle, I'm just going to reinsert my duckbill clips, actually, to make sure that my waves survive <laughs> this changing of the bottom part of the hairstyle. 
The second style is quite similar, but instead of a bunch of little rolls, I'm just going to make one large one. So I'm once again going to brush this hair out to make it come together a little bit more and form one cohesive mass of hair as much as possible. And then I'm going to twist this And I'm going to form a kind of long horizontal bun with it, like that. And this I am going to pin down to the nape of my neck. Okay, that should give you something a little similar to this in the back. So I'm going to take my clips out again. There we go, there is another option that is just a little bit quicker to do than the first option we did with all the little buns. Once you have your curls, this is a matter of a couple of seconds to put up and also looks very cute and historically accurate. Now of course you could do the same thing but make this bun out of a braid. So in that case you would braid the length of your hair first and then twist that braid into a bun. But that's not the third hair, so I'm going to show you today. Both of these that I have shown you so far have been visible, so it was very obviously a faux bob. But there is also a way you can make this a little bit more subtle, so that it actually looks as if your hair is short. And for that we are going to be turning the hair under. This is one method that won't work as well if your hair is very long or very thick, or both especially. <laughs> With hair that is about shoulder to waist length, this should work if it's not too thick. So I'm gonna brush it out again, the back of my hair. And I'm gonna be making several rolls again, and I'm gonna start in the center once again. It's quite similar to the first style actually in several ways. So I'm going to make a roll first, a little pink curl, but this time I am going to roll it under like that. I have my roll like that and I'm rolling it under so that I now have a little roll here with a hole in the center and I can use that hole to pin this to the hair at the nape of my neck. So I'm going to insert a bobby pin from both sides, so two in total. And that leaves me with a curl like this. I'm going to then move on to the next bit of hair and do the same thing. Okay, so there's the back. And then with this front hair, we're gonna do the same thing, but you wanna pay a little bit of extra attention to this, cause I feel like the front is usually the part that gives it away when you do a faux bob. Now, luckily the curls help a lot, but you still wanna just pay a little bit of extra attention to this and make sure it doesn't look too artificial. Now this method will generally give you a bit of a shorter bob and a bit more volume around the bottom so it's you know up to your personal preference which of these methods you prefer but this is what this looks like from all sides let me just accessorize this one with a little clip so those were the three variations on a 1920s faux bob that I wanted to share with you today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video and maybe found it helpful. If you did, don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for loads more beauty and lifestyle content. Don't forget to check out Ana Luisa. I will have a link in the description box below and major thanks to them for sponsoring today's video. There is another video here that I think you might also enjoy. You can go watch next. Thank you for watching and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Bye!